There's something really funny about Donald Trump refusing to prepare, flexing that he's not preparing, and then being mad that Kamala Harris was prepared. Let's watch Donald Trump cry. Let's watch him cope and cry on um, on Fox News. Lawrence Jones, who we know you think is doing a great job, and he is. There he is. He's live in a diner. He's also in Pennsylvania. He's in Washington, Pennsylvania. And he's talking to the people. And I think, Lawrence, right, some of the folks in the diner want to ask the president questions. That's exactly right, Angela. Let's bring it out to the people. Mr. President, not a lot from the moderators about the issues last night, but in this swing state of Pennsylvania, these issues are true. Sir, you own a car dealership, part owner of it, and you say, this is your birthday, by the way. It is. And what is your question for the president? Uh, good morning, President Trump. My question is, what are some of the immediate steps that you will take to improve the economy and get us out of this mess that Biden and Harris have left us in? Right. Great Mr. question. President. The first thing I do is close up the border. People have to come into our country legally. They can't come in the way they're doing now. We have millions and millions of people. Come they can't hear him, by the way. I don't think they can hear him. Coming in even a month on a monthly basis, and they're destroying our country, and it affects our economy. The other thing I do is drill, baby, drill. I'd be drilling, and I'd get energy prices, and I'll reduce your energy by half within 12 months half. And I hope that Lawrence, if you're listening, Lawrence, I hope you go and do a little shout out poll. And I don't know the people there, but I love the people there. I can see it. But why don't you do a shout out poll who they thought won the debate last night? It would be great. <laughs> you know, we always do the poll at the end, Mr. President. Yeah, I wonder who these people thought won the debate last night. This is probably 50 50, you know? I think uh, you. Why don't you do it while I'm on the phone? Yeah, but I'm, I'm on the phone now. Okay. So, but Mr. President, this young lady right here, uh, she's concerned about the future of the country. She's concerned about the grandkids, and she's concerned about the stress on these parents. Ma'am, what is your president? Uh, what is your uh, question for the former president? I would like to know what kind of programs or policies he could implement to reduce the parental stress with parents having to work one, two. I have family members who are working three jobs trying to make ends meet right now, yeah. spending more and more, well, more time away from their families. That's right. Well, we have big, you know. What are you going to do on day thought, one, Mr. President? Right. Child care is a number one priority. And I have no choice because I have a daughter named Ivanka. And maybe you never heard of my Ivanka, but I have a daughter named Ivanka. And that's all she talks to me about is child care for the people. And uh, she's the one that got it started. And Marco Rubio helped a lot. And a lot of the Republican senators that uh, we put in a great child care and we'll be expanding that. And that will help you a lot. So, Mr. President, we got a young voter right here. Not, not. All oh, so nothing. Okay, got it. That's cool. So, no policies. Dude, come on, man. You're running for president. Be f serious, dude. Be for f real, dog. You don't have, like, like, he's not even, he doesn't even give a f enough to, like, actually come out with any policies, dude. It's pissing me off. Man, I, I, I hate this country so much sometimes. This is one of those moments where I just, like, I despise my. F fellow American citizens where they're just like, don't demand more from their elected representatives. I despise the Republicans that are just like, yeah, I don't even care. The policies are, f they don't need to exist. I just like Trump on the vibes alone. And the same goes for Democrats who just like, do not have any expectation for Kamala Harris whatsoever. They just don't want, they just don't want Trump. So they're like, nope, no matter what they say or do, it's good. Like the, the fundamental basis for theoretical democracy relies on extracting concessions from your elected representatives we, we don't we might as well not call it a democracy at that point if you're not going to make any demands and if you're not going to and if you're just gonna be like yeah no demands all right well still voting though don't really care all the young people are voting for kamala harris but you have a concern about the media and cutting through the noise there what is your question for the former president Hello, President Trump. Hi. I'm just curious Hi. on how you're going to combat the uh, all the fake news and break through some of the noise to get the undecided voters to vote for you this November. Well, by doing question, a show like this, what, what are you going to do? It's a great question because <laughs> you really do it by doing a show like this with Lawrence and the group. Uh, you have to get your word out, and you don't have a fair media. You have a yeah. The undecided voters watching Fox News at 7 a.m. Eastern time. 
Those are the undecided. Very liberal, biased media. I have no idea why. I actually have no idea. Think of it. They don't want walls. They don't want borders. They don't want good economies. They, the things they want are destructive to our, our country. But I will tell you that it's very important if you're doing what I'm doing, you have to do shows like this. That's another thing. Kamala doesn't do any shows. She doesn't do interviews. She doesn't talk to people. She doesn't do anything like that. I like that. Like Trump is like, yeah, you got to do shows like this by going on Fox News. Like, come on, dog. Like, what do you mean? Like, you're going on Fox News. You've been interviewed by Elon Musk. And like the most contentious conversation you had was with Theo Vaughn. Why is Kamala not going on Theo Vaughn? And that's not fair to the public because they don't know what they're getting. But they saw last night what they had. They had a rigged show with somebody that maybe even had the answers. I mean, I'll be honest. I watched her talk, and I said, you know, she seems awfully familiar with the questions. And you get pretty good at that stuff after a while. But when I saw how, how totally rigged that was, I take a look at it, and I watch and I say, you know, you have to get out there. And one of the things I did is I said, let's do this show at, like, what time is it? 6.30 in the morning. And uh, it's an mm -hmm. honor to do it. But you have to go out and you have to do the shows. You have to go out and do media. And some of the media is honest. It's not all dishonest. That's the good news. But much of it is, I'd say, it close to 80%. And I mean seriously dishonest. So, Mr. President, the final question, we're in Pennsylvania. We cannot let this interview end without talking about fracking. And there's a lot of people concerned. There's something really funny about Donald Trump refusing to prepare, flexing that he's not preparing, and then being mad that Kamala Harris was prepared. Like, dude, obviously the interview questions were the expected questions. Like, they're not going to ask you about, I don't know, what your favorite seasoning is to put on chicken okay that's like they're not going to ask you unexpected questions they're going to ask you about like they're going to ask kamala harris like what do you think needs to be changed about the economy after the past four years do you think that america is better off now than they were four years ago like what do you what do you think is going to happen like that's a normal question that you should predict is coming for you and then you know figure out the best way to message around that for kamala harris a really solid way to message around these uh, tricky questions was to just Oftentimes, just dagger Trump, give like a little bit of an answer, then hit a light jab to in Trump's direction, and then have Trump flounder like a goddamn fish out of water for 30 seconds to 60 seconds. Right. So how are you going to make the case so you can win Pennsylvania? So I'm leading in Pennsylvania in just about all the polls, and I'm leading by some and a lot. And one of the issues is fracking. I've been from fracking from – it's like the day I was born, always fracking. She's always been against it, and she's been against it strongly. And if she won, she would end fracking in Pennsylvania 100 percent. She would end it, and that would be it. All she's doing is she just changed her view just a very short time ago. She went, oh, I'm totally in favor of fracking all of a sudden. She is totally against and You have every clip, and Sean Hannity plays them every night. Every clip, she's against fracking. All of a sudden, she's losing in the polls. She's not doing down. Her president is doing horribly. How did he do in the debate? At least she could speak. But her president goes down. They did a palace coup in the president. She comes out, and she does fracking. Uh, to, so I say to the people of Pennsylvania, you know what you have with Trump, and I'm with you. I went to school in Pennsylvania. I have my friends in Pennsylvania, and I'm a fracker. And that's 500,000 jobs in Pennsylvania and a lot of your income. Pennsylvania would be devastated if they take what? that away. She will obviously— There is not half a million jobs in Pennsylvania— for fracking what the f is he saying bro that is god damn bro that's like nationally there's 500 jobs in fracking okay despite what fracking execs want you to believe the industry has little impact on state job numbers in 2023 it accounted for 19,452 direct and indirect jobs the total number of uh people employed by the hydraulic fracturing services industry in the u.s as of 2023 is 61,000. The number in Pennsylvania for direct and indirect jobs that pertain to fracking is, uh, what is it, like 20,000? Obviously, take that away. Oh, she'll take away drilling in Texas. She's going to take away. They ended Anwar, the biggest oil site in the world that Ronald Reagan couldn't get in Alaska. They ended it. I got it approved, and they ended it. And nobody can. 
Why don't you fact check Harris? I have. I also promise you, I hate Kamala Harris more than you. Okay? I promise you. You're stupid. Your hatred for Kamala Harris pertains to her not being Donald Trump. And it's scary for you. This, like, person that you think is, like, a Marxist. Okay? I promise you. You are afraid because you think, oh, the Democratic Party is scary. They're going to, like, make me gay or whatever the f*** you think in your mind.